What is up, everybody? It's your boy Hugh here from Creator Up. Welcome back to part two of this tutorial series that I teach you how to track 360 live footage and how to insert and integrate 3D text and 3D object into a 360 video, like the video here captured with GoPro Fusion and a DJI Mavic Pro drone. To make things fun, as you see right here, instead of a 3D text, I'm actually placing the X wing from Star Wars right into the scene. So as long as you track the footage correctly, you can literally place any 3D object and make it look realistic into the scene. In this tutorial, I'll teach you step by step how to do exactly that. Let's dive right in. So right here is the finished timeline of After Effect. Uh, as you see, I'm placing an X Flyer X Fighter from Star Wars right here and track the whole scene. But we are gonna start from where we left out in tutorial part one. So let's me to go ahead and delete all this layer and we build this layer. And that's where we left off from part one of the tutorial. So we successfully track the scene either using Canvas 360 or the VR composer uh, from Metal Skybox. So whichever way to track um, will be fine. Uh, in here, uh, I will just continue using the footage tracked by Canvas 360. Uh, so now the footage is tracked and we have a no object right here. Uh, so now I'm gonna place in a 2D object. There's a many way to get 2D object, 2D model into your scene in After Effects. If you are a 2D artist, you probably already have one of your favorite. In here, I'm gonna use Element 3D, uh, but you can also use C4D, Maya, any the application you own and you have. So go ahead and hide this layer. We are gonna insert just a simple black solid. And then right here, we go to Effect and type in Element and drop an Element 3D into the scene. So right now, there's nothing here. I will actually go ahead and create something there. So go to Layer, so type in Test Layer, just using my name as the object. So after the create this text layer, hide it. And the goal is I'm gonna use this as a path to create a 3D object. So it's a custom 3D object. So go ahead, back to the 3D layer, right under custom layer right here, custom test and mask. And the path layer here, I go ahead and select hue, which is the text layer. Then go ahead and hit scene setup right there. So we open up element 3D window right here. So right now we have nothing here, but don't worry. Just go ahead and hit extrude right here. And then we bring in the text. And then if you pan around, look at that, it's a 3D text, great. Go ahead and hit OK. The next step we need to do is actually bring in the, the text into the same location as your no object. To do that, first go ahead right underneath back to the element 3D layer right here. Underneath group, okay, open it for you. Just underneath group, under group utility. Uh, right here, create a group no object. So go ahead and create a no object for the entire group. And then with this group, now it's controlling the element in here, the position of the element in here. So go ahead, uh, same idea how you do the 2D text. Go ahead and copy the position of this node object. And then hit P and paste in location of this object. And as you see, the text is right here, but why not? It's way smaller. So go ahead and hit scale and scale this up way up. And as you see, uh, the hue object, the duty tag is right there, see on top of everything. Not in the right direction though, so go ahead and hit R. Just rotate in Y direction to make it facing the flying drone. So the drone gonna fly through it. And then I'll go ahead and also bring this thing up. Let's go ahead and try to grab the Y. Actually, let's just do it in a position. Hit P. Get up right there. I think about right there is pretty good. So if you go ahead and resolve through the timeline, it will fly through this entire 3D object of my name. But as you see, the object doesn't sit really right in the scene. Just feel like it's there, the 2D text, it's a CG element. Uh, if that's all you want, cool. Then you can stop here and go ahead and render and finish it. 
But if you are uh, after effect or less, you look at that and it's just like, eh, no, it just doesn't look like it's part of the scene. It's not like it's not there because there's no reflection. Um, it just doesn't gel well in the scene. So I'm going to use two techniques here to make this in the part of the scene. One of the big one I'm going to use is something called environment map. Um, so how to do that? Uh, basically, the idea of an environment map is we're going to capture a scene of this entire environment and then use that as the texture of this 3D object. So I'll show you how to do that. So we are going to go back to Premiere, actually, find out the project file right here. That's the actual same footage. Uh, what we're going to do is actually go ahead and simply take a screenshot right here, this export frame. I'll pick the kind of middle frame like this is the location where if you look at a 2d object right there that's where uh so it, actually at this angle that's where the drone gonna fly through the text uh the same location so that is the exact location the 3d text will sit on too so you want to fly that frame exactly that frame and go ahead and take a screenshot of that frame just save it as somewhere you can find it later and let's go ahead and hit okay so now you have the environment map now go back to After Effects. So now let's import the environment, environment map in Element 3D. So go ahead and pick the Element 3D layer. Go ahead and hit the scene setup right there. Bring up Element 3D. So right here, this big giant button says environment. Just go ahead and hit that. So why now it is weird like black and white environment, but we gotta import our own environment. So go ahead and hit the arrow, then hit download from file, load from file, and then go ahead and find the file we just saved. And go ahead and open the environment map. There's a warning, say texture size warning. Uh, we just resize it uh, into the correct size because the environment map we have from the GoPro Fusion is actually a really big file. So it's okay. Just go ahead and just hit OK. So now we have the environment map. Just go ahead and hit OK again. And then the environment map is now applied in the object. So now after you have the environment environment map, you still cannot see the environment because the texture is not reflected. So go ahead and go into preset, go into material and play Chrome, which is one of the most refractive uh, material you can have, drop it into the text. And there you go. And you actually see the refraction of the environment. Look at that. The pan around, you see the texture just shining through the text. If you go ahead and go into the scene right here, you see this thing is almost like reflected everything around it. Let's just make it bigger so you can better see it. So now this is perfect, but sometimes that your environment is not perfectly aligned because sometimes you take the picture maybe in a different location and different time frame, or it just not like reflect in the right texture. So uh, in if that is the case, go ahead and right here underneath render setting physical environment right here. So in BG background, uh, if you pan around and now you see that is the environment map cast on your object. So just you can uh, right here rotation your environment. See you can rotate what it will flat up and down and then do all that. So now after we adjust the the background environment map location, um, it's still I don't want it to be too like chrome ish. So go back and do scene setting right here. Go ahead and pick the chrome material and then go down right here in a basic setting in the glossiness. Let's drop this down to probably about 70. And I think that's the setting I used on my original design. So now it just looks slightly better, more gel to the scene. So now let's try to get some ambient exclusion to make it even more fill into the scene. So uh, go back in here to scene setup. This time I gotta create a flat plane uh, and let's move it down around right here because uh, that gonna represent the platform you see I'm standing on. And I would go ahead and hit here, scale this up in that direction and scale this up. So that probably around the size of the platform I was on. And then go ahead and pick a material and go ahead and pick matte shadow because that is a shadow. So now go ahead and hit OK. And then uh, right here, go ahead and turn on again, render setting. And then I go ahead and pick this one, ambient exclusion, and then say enable AO right here, and then crank up the intensity.
So when you crank up the intensity, you see that there's a shadow right here because the shadow reflect the light and bounce back in here from the platform. So we'll make the object a little bit more real. Uh, so it's hard to see here because this is not a too complex object, but if you have a really complex object, have all the layer, this will really help you to sell. The object is part of the scene. So after ambient inclusion, the next thing you can do to make this uh, even more realistic is actually uh, to add a light wrap around the 2D object. That's how you do that. So go ahead and grab the actual movie layer, the environment layer, and duplicate that. And go ahead and move this layer on top of the 3D object. So block the 2D object, go to effect, go to channel, set matte, and set a matte of it. And then the channel, we're gonna use a 3D object right down there as your matte. In fact, and go ahead and pick effect and mask. And then if you solo this, that is what it does. And then we're gonna add the channel, the channel blur on it. And put it right in the middle of the two mat. And then go ahead and increase the alpha burnness. Make sure you invert the map right there. So if you unsolo this, and you see what it does uh, on to the 2D object. It's actually one of it too blurry. Uh, so we actually gonna uh, blur out the entire effect. So go ahead and add a fast blur on top of everything. Maybe about a hundred, it look good. Before, after. So uh, obviously that is one of it too strong, the light wrap. So go ahead and drop that the opacity about right there. That's looking good. Look at that. It just the little subtleness light wrap around the studio object make it really, really sell as the part of the scene. So light wrap is a really great technique you should use. Uh, go ahead and rename that actually quite light wrap. The last technique I'm gonna use to make this sell a little bit more because this footage is filled if the GoPro Fusion is still 5.2K, it's not 8K or even 8K. Uh, the footage compared to the 2D generated object is still look pretty fake. So one thing you can make this look a little bit real along with the footage is actually add a film grain. I love to use the Boys Effect Continuum Complete Film Grain. Uh, it's really great film grain plugin. Drop it right on top of the 3D object. And go ahead and pick a preset. Default is fine. And my license just expires, so I need to pay uh, Boys to continue my license. But as you see that, uh, if you go right in, let's go to 100%, and you can before and after. You see that uh, you add this realistic film grain onto your 2D object, make it look like part of the scene. So that is another thing that you can make it look better than into the footage. And then the last step is actually, let me just go ahead and hide this. We're not going to use this in here because I need to pay the license first. And last thing is I'm going to output this entire footage, bring it into Premiere. Let me open Premiere to show you the final result. After I render the scene from After Effects, I bring it back to Premiere, and then I will do a general color correction on top of the footage together to make it look like even more together. So if you look at that, the whole thing, that is before color correction, after color correction. The scene look like more rich, more together. So that's how you actually sell that is part of the scene uh, with color correction. So. Uh, it's a lot on this tutorial, so uh, that's why I break it into two parts. The first part is about tracking, second part is about composition to sell your 3D element into part of the scene. To just recap, so the uh, first thing I do is generate an environment map in Premiere uh, by taking a screenshot of the GoPro Fusion footage, import that, use it as an environment map, and then putting some reflective material onto my object so it can reflect the environment. And then uh, I add in an ambient inclusion. So make sure that the line actually bounce back from the base. So you see this part start. And then uh, I add to a I add light wrap around the object. Uh, so make sure light is part of the scene and then the scene actually reflected on the material have light, light surrounding it. And then the last part is I add in the boys effect continuum complete 
11 film grain um, to make it look like shot in the same camera. Again, you can use any film grain uh, you can get, but I just prefer to use BCC because I have it right here in my machine. And then last thing is to bring output the footage and bring it back to Premiere and do a general color grain color correction and make the scene job together. And that's how I generate this like scene you saw on my YouTube channel. So hopefully you learned something. Again, I challenge you to create the same style, same title tag, the same object in your video and comment on my YouTube channel, post your result, your video result, and let me enjoy your creative work. And again, if you have any question, don't hesitate to comment below and I will do my best to help you out to create the same result. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, my channel is going to create more and more post-production tutorial to help you to increase the production value of your footage. So don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time.